that Kenyans understand that even as the court the courts begin to upscale operations to include in person operations they will find extremely congested court diaries and dockets the backlog of cases has built up quite aggressively since March 15th this year fellow Kenyans the numbers of cases pending before our courts and the number of judges we have in our superior courts make for a grim reality for those of you who will be firing cases before our courts, especially in Nairobi in the coming days. If you file a land case in the Environment and Land Court at Mirimani, Nairobi today, the earliest your case will be heard in, is in 2022. This is because we have a total of 31 ELC judges in the country against a case backlog of 16,457 as at 31st of March this year. The situation is probably worse at the Court of Appeal, which has only 15 judges serving the whole Republic with a case backlog, with a case back, uh, caseload of 7,315 as at the 31st of March this year also. The situation is not any better at the Employment and Land Relations Court at the Employment and Labor Relations Court, which has only 12 judges throughout the Republic, against a case load of 13,197 as at the 31st of March. It is important to clearly and categorically state that this shortage of judges and the near paralysis of court operations has been caused by the president's refusal to swear in the 41 judges recommended by the Judicial Service Commission in July 2019 for appointment to the Court of Appeal, the Environment and Land Court, and the Employment and Labor Relations Court. The president has persisted, persisted in this refusal despite orders in two cases requiring him to swear those judges within 14 days. In the cases, petition number 427 of 2019 and the petition number 369 of 2019, the president argued through the Attorney General that he refused to swear in the nominated judges because he had information that some of them have integrity issues. He claimed that he was actively consulting with relevant state organs with a view to taking appropriate legal and administrative action, including a review of the JSC recommendations. The two courts reject, rejected those arguments and held that the JSC's the decision recommending persons for appointment by the president as judges is not subjected to review, reconsideration, or a second guessing by the president. Once the JSC makes recommendations, the president has no option but to formalize the appointment. The court's rules, the court's rule that the president cannot change the list, review it, or reject some names. He cannot decide to cherry pick from the list of nominees. Both courts ruled that the president must appoint the persons as recommended and forwarded to him by the chairs, since the, pres the president has no residual legal power 
to question or reject the names recommended to him by the JSC for appointment as judges in accordance with the Constitution. The Constitution does not donate any mandate to the President to perform any other act upon receipt of the names recommended by the JSC except to appoint them. Both courts categorically held that the refusal by the President to appoint the 41 judges was a grave violation of the Constitution. Having reached that decision, the court in petition number 369 of 2019, consisting of five judges, directed the president to appoint those judges within 14 days. The Attorney General, as is now his practice, filed notices of appeal, but he has not done anything to prosecute appeals, if any, from those decisions. Neither has he obtained any stay of execution in either of those cases. The legal position, therefore, is that the president is obliged by the two court valid orders, or orders to appoint the 41 judges within 14 days of the decisions of those two courts. The president's disregard of court orders does not bode well for our constitutional democracy and is potentially a recipe for anarchy. Besides the court orders, I have challenged the executive to table before the chairs the alleged information of lack of integrity it has against some of the 41 nominees. Some of the individuals the executive claims to have adverse information against are serving judges. If the executive's allegations are true, these persons should not then be serving as judges. However, no evidence whatsoever has been availed to the JSC, both during the, the interviewing process and after. Unfortunately, this disregard of court orders by the president is part of the pattern by the executive. It is important to remind Kenyans that in addition to these two specific orders, the executive routinely disregards court orders. For example, despite, existing, despite an existing court order, the government recently evicted over a thousand families from the Kariobangi area of Nairobi, all in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Additionally, the government has willfully neglected to settle dozens of court decrees issued by various courts against the government. These court decrees amount to almost one billion by conservative estimates. And they go back several years. Not, it's not recent, they go back several years. Many of these decrees arise from personal uh, injury claims by victims of road, ac ac uh, road traffic accidents caused by government vehicles. In some of these cases, the victims have suffered paraplegic injuries. Yet, the government has failed to settle this decrease. Because they cannot afford to pay for nursing care, some are carried, I'm told, by their grandchildren to bask in the sun at, and at times forgotten to be rained on out there. Attempts to compel the accounting officers in the relevant ministries are always rebuffed with the contemptuous utatu, utadu attitude. How can we expect God to bless our nation when we are so callous to the most desperate in our society?
There are many other court decrees and orders which require the assistance of police to execute, which have, which have been neglected and disobeyed. As a result, many decree holders are unable to realize the fruits of their judgments that they have obtained from courts. Your Excellency, I want to address the, uh, the President personally. Your Excellency, you know I have respect for you as our President and I have told you that. You also know that I have, for a long time now, and successfully sought, to, sought an appointment to discuss this issue with you, leaving me with no option but to raise the matter, matter through this public statement. It will be a direction of my duty if I do not raise Wanchiku's agonies in my domain. At least let her know that I share in her frustrations. It is for this reason that I must remind you, Your Excellency, that you swore to defend and uphold the Constitution and the laws of Kenya. The Constitution, as the two multi judge court cases held, requires you to appoint judges recommended to you by the JSC, which you have refused to do. The laws of this country include valid court orders. It therefore behoves you to appoint the 41 judges recommended for appointment by the JSC as ordered by the court without any further delay. As Your Excellency has pledged in the past, you respect the rule of law. I urge you to now demonstrate that faith and respect the rule of law by complying with those two court orders. In so doing, you will also alleviate much suffering for Kenyans who are seeking justice in our courts. In the same vein, I request Your Excellency to instruct the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya to take stock of all the court decrees and orders issued against the government and to immediately begin a process of satisfying them. It greatly undermines the rule of law for the government to act in deviance of court orders. And this pattern puts a great risk to our constitutional democracy because it risks the contagion of lawlessness. The government should be in the forefront in upholding the rule of law. The government cannot demand of its citizens the obedience of the law it is itself disobeying with abandon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's my statement.